We're yes. really excited to be here. There are words, there are names like Einstein up there and oh Emerson, <laughs> like no pressure. We're here to talk about fashion. <laughs> Definitely Einstein's uh, forte as well. Um, Ariel is so prepared, she has note cards. Can They're we... back up, uh, just in case. Can, note you please, cards. can you please hold up your note cards? I mean, I'm pretty sure. And I printed and taped She the not only on has note cards, they're like printed and taped professionally. Um, I have no note cards. Back in school, I probably would have just like written the questions on my hand or something. Where is Lauren Rothkoff? Raise your hand. OK. So that's one of my uh, best friends from college. And we were roommates. And she. Uh, texted me a few weeks ago and was like, I just want you to know I got a really good seat so I could heckle you throughout the entire event. So uh, if you hear like sarcastic snorts or like <laughs> see like very like vivid eye rolling, it's, it's Lauren. But uh, she can attest to the fact that I probably would not have prepared in advance uh, any notes because she saw me study in college. But anyway. Um, I thought we could kind of structure this, con we're going to make it super conversational, uh, just talking. I'm going to ask Eva a bunch of questions. Um, we also asked our Instagram audience to send in their questions that we have for each other. So, um, and then we'll also have a yeah, we're gonna little have, section where you guys yeah. could ask your questions as yeah, well. Yeah, so we'll start with just like chilling, two ladies chilling, drinking our like <laughs> vodka, just kidding, it's water. Um, and then uh, we'll open it up to questions from the audience. So if you guys have questions or think of questions throughout, I think there are gonna be note cards distributed and just um, <laughs> pass it back and then they'll get passed to us and we'll answer the questions. So, um, so I wanted to ask you a question. Your recent collection, like your latest, is it like, would you call it a drop? Like Yeezy yeah. style? I, I, yes, it's a drop. My next drop is Wednesday. Okay, okay. <laughs> you and Yeezy and Supreme, like really all cool. like cool. <laughs> um, tell me about the latest collection. So um, we are launching uh, all apparel, um, jewelry, accessories, shoes, and um, November is just a bunch of sweaters and really great pajama sets. We're introducing cashmere and leather, so really pretty colored cashmere sets and leather jackets. And um, it's, I mean, I shouldn't play favorites, but it's definitely my favorite collection so far. Um, and everything's just really pretty, things that you wear every single day. We kind of coined the term elevated basics, so it's pretty much things that you want in your wardrobe to wear every single day, but with a little bit of edge to it, a little bit more style. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, so that's what's launching Wednesday. Did Nordstrom approach you or did you approach Nordstrom? Nordstrom approached me. Um, I did a collaboration with them before I created my line that was a capsule for one of their in-house brands and it was an opportunity of a lifetime so obviously I was like, of course. And it just sort of, I mean, it was very surreal because it did super well thanks to my my followers. Um, Wait, I read somewhere that it was like four million dollars in like 24 hours or something like that. I'm under NDA, okay. but <laughs> it it did well, I just really said it. well. Okay. Um, it did really well, and um, it was just a no-brainer. We worked really well together. Their team's amazing, mm -hmm. and when they asked me to create my own line, it was. Just a dream come true. This is when, by the way, like, can you tell that I love Oprah and I'm basically like. <laughs> I'm supposed to be the moderator, gonna, by the way. Gonna, yeah. I haven't asked one question. <laughs> she's like, when I um, asked Ariel to do this, I was like, do you mind moderating? It's gonna be so easy. You just have to like ask me some questions. And meanwhile, I have like full on hijacked this conversation. Wait, I, I texted her last week and, or this week and I said, how many questions should I come up with? She goes, oh, don't worry about it. I have a bunch of questions. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what? Just leaning into this like Oprah No, I'm so grateful. This is amazing. Um, but so this is when you only had Ruby, right? Yes. The first collection. Yes. And yeah. now you have and then two I, babies. Now I have two. I designed um, this entire, I mean, we're already up to designing September of 2019, and we have eight collections in total mm -hmm. dropping. Um, and so when I first got approached to do the um, my own brand. It was when I was pregnant with with Esme, so mm -hmm. I pretty much designed up until June, very very pregnant. And then when so I was couldn't really try. I mean, I tried things on anyway with a giant belly, and I took right. selfies. I'll post those eventually. But <laughs> yeah. they it, it was it was an incredible experience to do that. 
Now, I remember I when I saw you when you were pregnant with Esme, and I think I was oh, like God. still in the weeds with Tao, and I literally She's was, like, don't do it. Yeah. Like, well, I'm already pregnant. <laughs> she was like super She's, pregnant, and I was like, it's really hard. You stuffed, like, you're going to regret this. She stuffed my purse with like thousands of what? snacks from Instagram. Oh, yeah, yeah. I stole She's snacks like, for you. Eat yeah. now. I literally said something along the lines <laughs> of like, eat now, because in a few weeks, you're not going to be able to eat. She's like, you're going to diet, and that's it. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it, I mean, like, how have you found the adjustment from one to two? Because for me... That was one of my questions for you. Oh. <laughs> so can we... Okay, so how, how are you able to balance... She's stealing my question. Do you see what's happening here? It's easy. How are you able to balance being a famous author, the head of fashion at Instagram, a mother, a wife? I mean, you are... The wife me, part does not happen yeah. anymore. <laughs> I just she, be clear about that. No, she is seriously though, and I'm sure many of you guys can agree, <laughs> such an inspiration when it comes to being a businesswoman and then also an incredible family person and a wife and mother and all of that. So I think everyone, that was also one of the questions one of my followers sent in. They just want to know how you manage it all. Well, um, I would like to point out that Tom is not in the audience right now. <laughs> He's, Please tell them yeah, what he's yeah. doing. So basically I was like, oh, like I get a few seats for like 92nd Street Y. It's like a big deal that we're <laughs> on the stage. Like Ariel and I were backstage and there's pictures of like all these people from Malala to my personal favorite, Whoopi Goldberg. <laughs> and we're gonna recreate some of the poses that we saw like on the pictures backstage. And I was like, oh Tom, like do you wanna come? It's like, I have like, it's sold out and we have like th two or three extra seats. And he was like, that's okay. <laughs> And I was like, oh, very supportive spouse. But he's at home right now um, with a babysitter, like wrangling children. Um, and um, so it's hard. I mean, I think, and also, by the way, my parents are not here either because I, I had like WhatsApp them and I was like, hey, like I'm doing this thing and it sold out. And they were like, that's okay. And I was like, no one loves me. What? Um, so for me, it's hard because I feel like the word balance is such the question you probably get asked a lot too is like, how do you juggle it all? Yeah. How do you balance it all? And I just think that it's such a fallacy because as women in the room who are innate, we are innate multitaskers. And I think part of it is that like, what you have to do when you use the word juggle or balance is just know that it's a very ephemeral state balance. So like, if you think about scales, it's only like this for like one second before it goes this way or that way. And just to kind of like beat this analogy <laughs> like a dead horse, uh, when you are juggling, for instance, you know that there are going to be like balls dropping. Right. And when you are learning to juggle, it's like flying all over the right. place. And I think that's the key thing to know as like a woman today, as a mother, as a wife, whatever you have going on in your life, is just know that like the scales might tip in one way or the other. So right now, these I'm on book tour these two weeks. Um, and when I structured my book tour, I said to my publishing team, I was like, I really wanna be home for the weekends just because that's the most concentrated time I right. have with my kids. Um, and so we made it happen, and that's why I'm here right now, at 92nd Street Y, uh, on the stage that Billy Crystal sat on. Um, and so I think that's the first step, is that we all have to acknowledge that like, we will fail, we will be exhausted, like, um, we will feel like we're on the, like any time one of my kids gets sick, it's like, the worst, yeah. The worst, yeah. because what is, a, some, not, I wouldn't say my machine is well oiled, but like, it's a machine. It throws everything off. Yeah, it throws everything yeah. off. And then like I had to like, I remember last week I was at Bloomberg doing an interview and then I got a text from, we have a nanny who's wonderful, but she texted and she was like, Ren just threw up three times. <laughs> and then I had to leave, go straight from the interview to the pediatrician. Oh my God. But then I had to do a conference call yeah. and then I brought my sick child to the office and it was like a thing, but you just have to find a way to make it yeah. work. How, how do you? I mean, that's pretty much, I mean, my, what I always say is there's really just no answer to, right how you balance it all. I, I just take each day as it comes and I hope to, I try to better myself every single day. Do so. you sleep a lot? Yeah, I have a nanny. You have a nanny, yeah. but like, is she, does she live in or like? She lives in now with two, so okay. it was, I mean, it was not really a, a thought process. I kind of knew right. that that was, if I don't get, and if Brandon doesn't get eight hours of sleep, we're not, we're not good you parents. You get eight hours of sleep. Seven, seven to okay. eight. But like, I try to, I mean, I go to sleep early. But you early. guys go out too. We like, go I out, watch your Insta but this stories. is the thing. Brandon stays out. Okay. Brandon stays, and I take him oh, over yeah. home. Yeah. See, I don't go out like ever. Oh no, we go out. I go out like if I have to. We're going out after this. Oh my god. Yeah. 
But I was home all day today with my kids. Right, right. No, I so think I, it's I great. feel like I, need, I deserve a but glass like, of wine tonight. how do you tonight? not fall asleep when you're out? I fall asleep when I'm out. Like After I was the two glasses, I'm, I'm done. Two glasses? Yeah. Two glasses that of wine, That is like I'm a done. wild night I know. out. For me. It used to be parties, though. Yeah. Now it's dinner, and that's it. No, my fr I have other friends from college. I think Jamie and, is Jamie here? Look at all your Heather. college friends, Kim. That's so nice. You are loved. Friends. Can you guys please raise your hands? OK, hi. I can't see you because of the lights, oh, but I'm waving at you. And then section. my friend Michelle is somewhere in the audience, too. Hi. Um, so I used to like go out. Like, like I was like told that clubs? no, yeah, I was told that kids don't go ooh ooh no. anymore. But they like, don't. I used to like go out. Night clubs aren't cool anymore. They're not cool. It's like bars. I but think. that makes me so happy that they're not cool. I know, because I feel like we kind of hit the prime time. Now we are cool. Because yeah, we don't. We're like to dinner. Clubs. Yeah. But I used to go out, and now if it's like I was uh, in LA like maybe 24 hours ago, I don't remember anymore, <laughs> or 48 hours ago. And then I was at dinner and I went to the Soho House in LA and literally- Oh, that's fun. It's fun. But then people were like, oh, do you want something to drink? And I was like, I'll have a white wine spritzer, please. <laughs> and like the waiter was like, whoa, no one orders that here. And I was like, grandma yes. does, um, that's me. Um, but I feel like that's so much of the transition too. I'm assuming that most of this audience is like, you know, 20s and 30s. And I feel like that natural transition from like, it's partying been a, and then yeah, yeah it's, been a, like, it's it's yeah. I think that's something that I I, it's nice I, I like it because you get to a point where you're just over it you're over yeah. like doing that yeah so once in a while it's actually really fun yeah you know once uh, every six months for me okay fine <laughs> like, me, like we twice a week twice a week that's gonna week. Friday Saturday night or Thursday always. Saturday always Thursday and Saturday yeah because Friday I have dinner with my family my, right. my parents are right there oh your and, parents came how yeah. nice <laughs> wait it gets better it gets better. My in-laws are here somewhere, too. Oh, your in-laws came. Yeah. How nice. <laughs> Whatever, my friends from college came. Yeah, that's amazing. That's yes. amazing. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> that's for them. <laughs> OK, so wait, we have to talk about the Stuff. book. OK. So tell us, first of all, I read the book with Ruby Aww. last night, but also the day before, and it's amazing. It's such a great Thank book. You. If you haven't read it, go out and get it, because it's so good. But tell us the inspiration behind Juno Valentine, and tell us how you came up with her really chic outfit, because it's oh, so good. Thank you. Well, it's like, so Juno is definitely, there's a part of Ren in Juno, and there's a part of Juno in Ren. And it's funny, my illustrator Derek, who's somewhere here too. Derek, are you here? Yay, Derek. Amazing. So when he and I were His talking. His bio in the book, by the way, is amazing. Yeah, he it's wants. so funny. We're, we're, it bo it's both, we knew that we were meant to work together when we were both like, Okay, quick, who's the person like, that you would kill to meet? And we, were both, we said at, at three, two, one, Oprah at the same time. <laughs> and we were like, oh my God, it's meant to be. We actually didn't meet in real life until after the book was done. We did almost everything for the book. Well, we, um, it was kind of, it's kind of like a meet cute story. Like he tagged me in a photo, I DM'd him, and then a year and a half later, I DM'd him again and was like, hey, like, do you want to work on a book together? And he was like, oh my God, are you serious? And I was like, yeah. And he was like, yeah, sure. And I was like, great, you have six weeks, bye. <laughs> um, and then only after he finished the book, he was like, wait, most books are done in like, it takes like six months to do illustrations. Does it really? Book. Usually, yeah, for a children's book, six right. months to a year, just it's like, it's a lot, it's a really How long, long did it process. take to do, to complete this book? This book was completed literally in like five or six months total, oh, wow. but most children's books, for instance, if you were to start writing it now, it wouldn't come out for two and a half to three years. Children's books oh like, are on a really long cycle, but ours, like, we were just able, my publisher was able to kind of push it forward, because I was like, I really want it to be out, like, just sooner. That's amazing. Um, because in, like, three years from now, right. like, who knows? Oh my god, I see Ren in your face right now, it's really... Really? Yeah. <laughs> no, like, you, she looks so much like you. Really? Yeah. Oh my god, I'm gonna cry. She I don't looks think, so much like you. I don't think she looks anything no, like me. just like you. I think she looks just like Tom. I see Tom, but I just saw, I just saw her in you. My dream in life is to have a baby that looks like me one day. Because <laughs> like when people see They Tom, do always look like the dads, why? Like Tao looks Weird. exactly like Tom. Ren looks like so much like Tom too. And no, I'm like, like you. I, I just don't know how that's gonna she's happen. She's your twin. But what, so we met, um, and we started doing illustrations together. And when we were thinking about the outfit, Ren does not, is, she's not a super girly girl. She, up until like literally a month ago, did not like tutus, which, and I know Ruby and Esme <laughs> are both like, girl, they're girlier. Yeah. 
um, well, ran a lot of the time, yet, but didn't yeah. like dresses. She right. just wants to be able to like run and jump and skip and like move, move, move. She's like a bundle of kinetic energy. When's her birthday? She's a December birthday. I think she's oh, a- so soon. Yeah, soon. Our birthday theme, okay, she's not here right now, so <laughs> can, like no spoiler alert. Um, is, well, we were in a car earlier and I was like whispering about, like Derek, you were in the car, and we were like whispering about her birthday party. And then I, I said the word Hatchimal. I said Hatchimal, oh my God, it's really but I whispered favorite. it so quietly. And she literally was like, are you talking about Hatchimals? <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, like how can she that's hear so well? That's a great one. Yeah, we're doing a Hatchimal themed party. Oh my, that's such a good one. So it's like, there'll be a cake in the shape of an oh, egg. Oh, so good. And then what, when I want, like when you, you cut, cut it the egg, then... the dream is that like you see a, another cake inside with, but I think that's gonna be too hard. Or that's maybe really, I can do really like cool. a fake, like do car it. cardboard thing and then she can I crack it that. open. You should definitely do that. Yeah, but um, back to the original question. Yeah, sorry. This is why I'm, I'm, I usually ask the questions because I'm really bad at answering <laughs> them because I ramble. But anyway, we knew it wanted, we wanted an outfit that was pretty gender neutral and that um, it's something Ren would wear and also just something that doesn't put on any traditional notions of girliness or like boy outfits that like boys or girls could right. wear. And so when I was d designing the, I did a collection with Janie and Jack, which just hit stores it's this week. It's so cute. Thank you. So, so cute. Um, we, we created this outfit in real life and working with the Janie and Jack team, I, I felt very strongly that it was an outfit that boys and girls should be able right. to wear. Um, and it was so much fun. Um, but you know, Juno goes through time and space and tries on all these shoes of historic women from Queen Elizabeth to Serena Williams to Misty Copeland. And um, it was really fun because we were able to kind of imagine Juno in each of those outfits. I loved that part. Thank I you. Loved it, but I also loved her original sneakers and I liked the whole concept of the story. Why, thank you. It's so good. I, I mean, I think, you know, we both have daughters and I think that right now in this juncture of life, politics and, and the age that both of our girls are, right. it's like they absorb everything, they internalize everything. So if you say something like, oh, that's not important, or, um, oh, you know, she's only three, and you kind of talk down to her, right. they internalize they it. Understand so it, yeah. I really wrote this book because I want, um, I want girls to know they're important, that they're capable of so many things, and that um, no one should tell them what they can or can't be. I love that. And I think right now in 2018, unfortunately, that feels like from, very high levels that does seem to be the message that yeah. our government is giving people sometimes. Um, so I hope that a book like this, you know, in people's individual communities, of their households and families, they're able to kind of put forth that message that girls can do really anything. And it's, it's amazing. And I was gonna say, it's also really interesting with social media because we both put our kids on, yeah. you know, the public platform and I feel like I get messages all the time of people randomly telling me to dress my daughter more like a girl or dress her more like, you know, just really unsol just crazy messages. And it's, 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 a, it's uncharted territory. You don't know how it's going to affect, yeah. you know, young girls later on in life. So I'm curious how you sort of handle, you know, putting Ren and Tao on Instagram for everyone to see and mm -hmm. if, how your husband feels about it too. Well, I get asked that question a lot too, where people are like, oh, you know, if I'm working with a model who has kids or designers who have kids, they're like, oh, should I put my kids on social media? I'm like, it's such an individual decision. Yeah. Like, there's no, I wish there were a guidebook for parenting. Right. Um, there is no guidebook for parenting. There are, like, some people don't believe in screen time. Other people think it's constructive for them to understand, like, technology. Right. It really depends. Um, and for me, with putting Ren and Tao on Instagram, I just feel like Ren and Tower, like, they are like more, they're my whole heart. They're like ha on my brain all yeah, the time. It's you. And it's me. It's just a part of how I've evolved. So when I worked at Teen Vogue, like, all of my Instagrams were beauty products and like beauty events. Um, and then when I was renovating an apartment, like, my whole Instagram story, well, I don't even know if Instagram stories existed then, but it was like. They wanted to see your journey, like your yeah, life. Yeah, your exactly. Lifestyle. And then for me, if I were to suddenly like not show this one aspect of my life that number one, I take so much joy and um, pleasure in, except for when Tao is sick or except <laughs> when uh, Ren is being Ren, um, uh, you know, it would, I just feel like it would be kind of weird and also inauthentic of right. me to do that, you I know? Um, and then when there comes a point, anytime, if, if and when there's ever a point where Ren says like, 
I don't want you to do this, or she doesn't don't. seem into it, like even the slightest bit, it's done. Yeah. I'm not gonna do it, so. And Tom feels the same way? Tom is uh, Tom. <laughs> uh, so. Because he's not big on, like he's. It's hard to know what he's feeling. <laughs> uh, he's British. Um, so, and he has like resting British face, which is like literally inscrutable. <laughs> and so for my friends from college in the audience, they've known him since, I mean, Tom and I have been together since college. Did you meet him in college? We met in, when I was studying abroad in England and I was living with Lauren at the time. Um, and Lauren literally was, I, I remember telling Lauren, oh, I met this guy and he's gonna come visit. And she was like, what? Uh, and then he came over and she was like, huh. Um, <laughs> and I don't know if she thought, did you think Lauren that like, 17 or 18 years later, this we would be married with babies. No, I just wanted his socks off our floor. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he and he still does this, where he takes his socks off and he like molts them all over the apartment. And at least Lauren it's socks them. Yeah, yeah, at least it's like not underwear. Like, well, that too. different story. Uh, <laughs> but basically, like Lauren is a neat freak. Um, I'm looking at her. I'm trying to. I'm, I'm reverse heckling her right now. Um, and she was always just like, his socks, they're disgusting, like they're everywhere. And sorry, Lauren, um, apology in front of a thousand people. But um, Tom, I think, just kind of accepts it. Yeah. Like many things in a relationship, right. he's just like. This, it is what it is. It is what it is. Right. Yeah. No, how, about, how about you guys? Op complete opposite. Oh. My husband wants to be front and center on my Instagram. Wow. All day, every day. He is a very good dancer. Yeah. Uh, where is Brandon? Don't say that though, because he's probably back there. Actually. Oh, he's backstage. Because his seat was, I don't know. He, okay. Yeah. He, okay, one of the questions that my followers asked you oh, God. is, how do you feel about the fact that Brandon is a better dancer than you? <laughs> Which I thought was I've really savage and ballsy of no, this No, it's woman. so true though. I've kind of <laughs> accepted it. I'm not a great dancer, but he's like, abnormally good. Like, He's it's very weird. good. I don't even know. His dad's really good. Mitchell's wherever he is. He, his dad's a really good dancer. So I, I know Mitchell's going to want me to give him credit. So Brandon takes after him like that. But I think that Brandon's just so full of energy and passion. It just comes through his dancing. And me, it's just like, I don't, I just move. I'm like you. <gasps> no. Come on, your workout videos are my favorite thing am, ever to watch. Well, first of all, no, I've not worked so out good. in like eight weeks. Okay, Second fine, but all, the last one you posted with Amanda Pitts was the funniest thing I've ever seen. Very poor coordination. <laughs> so good. Um, and you know what? We should do one together. Yeah. Oh, and then, wait, wait. We should. I think, should we make Tom do it? Yes. And then not Brand he will Brandon's never speak it. to me ever again. <laughs> It's already hard getting him to speak to me sometimes, guys. Um, wow. Yeah, but yeah. I so he's opposite. That. Okay. All he right. He loves Instagram. Wow. He wants, like, if I go 20 minutes without posting, wow. I'll be like, I'll get a text in the other day, like, why haven't you posted? I'm like, oh my God, I did. Wow. Leave me alone. I just taught Tom how to use Instagram stories, like, literally two weeks I ago. I love the one he posted, though, of the, the, the Eye of Sauron. Yeah, that was great. <laughs> Okay, so Tom, um, his Instagram handle is sxmco. It's funny. We have to work on that username. I acknowledge <laughs> that, okay? Um, I'm trying to change it. I'm gonna change it to like Tom Bannister 212 or something. That's cool. But he um, started doing Instagram stories and his first story was literally like a mummy, <laughs> like unearthed and it was literally like, and I was like, Tom, like this is not probably, no. but it's authentic to him. Yeah, good, good for him. <laughs> That's, yeah. that's the goal, yes. though. And now he's posting, he used GIF stickers. Like, he used, like, for the Eye of Sauron post, he had, like, a little it dancing really demon. Funny. <laughs> and I'm like, so that required him to go into GIF stickers, type in dancing demon. <laughs> like, when you, then I thought about it, and I was like, okay, he's, like, he's I do getting that. there. Is that what? Weird? I, like, yeah, search but, like, it in the GIF. No, that's normal. Okay. But, like, for Tom, this is, like, very but, like, your, weird. Your Insta story, like, your Insta stories are next level. So it's like hard to, you know, yours are amazing. How could any of us be as good as yours? I just post like, even though she has like 5,000 dots, I still sit and watch all of them because they're so entertaining. Fun fact, oh, no. the maximum number of stories that you could post in 100? a 24 hour period is 100. I knew that. So I've never posted more than 100, not 5,000, okay? Um, 100 and then they start you know deleting why yours from are the front. good because they're not all videos you do pictures So it's like quick and easy. Mm. You know what I mean? And actually another fun fact 
the best retention for Instagram, like, they we're just gonna turn this into an Instagram, like, session, like, is when you mix photos, videos, boomerangs, and you switch up the modality. If you That's watch Instagram's Instagram stories, like, at Instagram's Instagram stories, they usually, like, they'll do a boomerang, and then it'll be a photo, then it'll be, like, a hyperlapse, and they mix it up. I just don't care, I just do whatever. Well, this leads me to my next question, because I think a lot of people would wanna know this. What are your three biggest tips on having an amazing Instagram page? Mm, I think number one, like have a like your own voice and own opinion. I think a lot of people think that their Instagram should be something like if you live in New York City, you have to post like avocado toast and like you know a perfect. <laughs> That's very LA. Yeah, like pumpkin spice, like perfect latte, yeah. latte and like walking across Fifth Avenue <laughs> with like the arch in the background or something. And it's like if you like to cook, post that. If you like. Um, like fluffy puppies, post that. Like whatever you're into, by the way, fluffy puppy is the best hashtag to follow. Ever. I'm so serious. If you follow hashtag fluffy puppy, like. Um, the one you've been posting is the cutest thing ever. Yeah, there's like one of my neighbors has yeah. a really cute, um, like a multi poo. And no, it's it was like, a Pomeranian. Oh, Pomer oh, that one is. Oh, do you and know? You showed him from the back. Do you like know Helena butt. Borden from yes, Brazil? It's That's the cutest her dog ever. He is clinically obese. I love that. So is my mom's dog. <laughs> so, um, so, because I, when I picked him up, I was like, oh my God. <laughs> and, and then I was like, what kind of dog is this? Is this like, uh, what did I She's say? She's like, they're like, not supposed to look like this. A schnauzer or something? She was like, it's a Pomeranian. And I'm like, oh. And she was like, he's like 45 pounds though. <laughs> they're supposed to be 12 pounds. And then when you look at him from behind, he has like back. He's he has so like, cute. He has like a bubble butt and it's so cute. He's so cute. Um, but yeah, so like that was my that's my first tip is basically like post what you want to post. I think so often when people have anxiety over Instagram or they just think like, oh my god, like they, it's because they feel pressure to right. do something. And once you kind of let you go of that mental block, yeah. but you could see that through the picture right. when they're trying to do something. Or like do you want to bring something not. different to the table, like be who you are. Yeah, it's going to be like a great exactly. And then number two is. Um, like the other thing, and this is more for like the, from the brand perspective, but I talk to a lot of like fashion designers or brands where they're like, oh, like, do you see how we don't follow anyone and we don't engage with anyone? We are so cool. <laughs> and I'm literally like, oh. Uh, because it's like, I think so much of Instagram is about community and engaging back and commenting. And like, as you build that, it, it makes Instagram so much more fun. And the number three thing is people should like let go of the grid obsession. Like people are really obsessed with the way their grid looks because they'll right. literally say like, oh, like first I'm gonna it post a flow. food shot, yeah. then I'm gonna post like, um, uh, you know, an outfit shot, and then I'm gonna do like a scenery shot. And like literally, if you have so much time in the day to do that, that's yeah. great. But like most people, once they follow you on your profile, once they follow you, they never go back to your going profile. To the actual page, yeah. Unless it's an ex-boyfriend or girlfriend. Right. <laughs> in which case, like we know that you go there a lot. Um, yeah. That's really funny. Yeah. So we have about like I think. Um, I think we should probably open it up to questions now. Yeah. Right. Oh my god. We have half an what? hour. That was half an hour. All right. Oprah. Okay. You know, like, we, I make it easy. She's so um, good, yeah, we right? Made it, like, um, we hope that, I saw like a guy walking through the aisle like this, <laughs> like shaking index cards in your faces. So, uh, <laughs> but maybe we'll start with some of the oh, yeah. um, follower questions. Okay. Okay. You wanna go first or should I go first? I will go first because I got some really random great oh, questions. Um, the first one is, if you had to guess how many seeds the average watermelon has, <laughs> How many seeds do you think it has? I'm just wondering. From <laughs> Yaaria0404. Can someone Google the answer to this, by the way, while, while I okay, ask? Okay, yeah. Um, I like how I like literally make, asking you the hardest question. I'm gonna say, wait, is this the black seeds and the white seeds? Oh, you see why she's so brilliant. <laughs> Because she just like broke it down. Well, I, I mean, just I'm gonna seeds. go by the black seeds. Okay, yeah. Because those are the, the ones you take out. Yeah, because the white ones are the baby seeds. Yeah, like they you eat those, it's like fine. blossomed right. into like okay. true seeds yet. I'm gonna say, no, I'm gonna do a combined. I'm gonna say one, 120. 120. Yeah. My, I'm gonna guess 314. Can someone, did someone go, oh, someone, yes. 200 to 800. What? Wow. 800 seeds? Why wouldn't you just buy a seedless the watermelon? Ones, they're all over. <laughs> like, they, maybe How they're counting do they the make it seedless, though? That's like genetic modification. That? Okay. You're eating some weird yeah. genes right there. Um, okay, so Wait, I already asked the question about Brandon being a much better dancer than you. 
Uh, Can we schedule a Ruby and Ren play date? Yeah, we've been meaning to do that for like a year. I know. So let's do it. I'm back oh, from book tour like in two weekends. So okay, we'll do let's that. do it. Okay, here's a question. Uh, what is, uh, Samantha Kane wants to know, what's been your biggest mistake ever and what have you learned from it? Ooh. Hmm, that's an Oprah style question, Samantha Kane. Well done. What? Oh God, Samantha. I mean, my biggest mistake. That's really hard. I mean, honestly, I've made a lot of mistakes, but it sounds so cliche. I, I probably, I wouldn't change making those mistakes because I learned from them. Is that a boring answer? I mean, like that's... It's true though. Yeah, like I've done things obviously that were mistakes, but they led me to, I guess, where I am right now. That's a good and very fair answer. Samantha caught me off guard, that's not cool. Michelle Spar oh. Michelle Sparrow wants to know, what's your favorite place in New York City for ice cream? Is she in oh. the audience? Is she craving oh. ice cream? Mac and Bolio's. That's my old favorite. school. It's so, because wow. they have the best cool flavors. Oh, so you yeah, know? Like They're the not cool like flavors. healthy. I like the, the real fattening ice cream, like the real one. I like ones that like taste like nothing. Oh no, no. <laughs> like, there's a place called Sundays and Cones on 10th Street between 4th and 3rd, and I love that place. Like, it's owned by um, someone from Hong Kong, and they have like flavors like corn. <laughs> there's like, uh, I think one of them is like, cream ice cream and you're like everything is like shades of like beige if that place were like a store it would be Celine but old Celine like everything white and pale wait we have a big stack of questions from the okay audience. should I put these down all right there's okay, a lot well, of good ones here wait, we can but I can ask that um, they okay. just want to know how tall you are uh, oh there's that a lot of how tall is she actually actually yeah <laughs> like I'm like on stilts or something I'm five eight and a half Oh, oh, <laughs> what was that like shocked murmur? Like, do, do you guys like- They were very excited. Do you guys think I'm taller or shorter? What? I'm gonna start my Pilates no, again I tomorrow. Five, eight and a half sounds, that's what I would think. Yeah, I'm five, eight and a half. Yeah, that's what I would think. Yeah, I, um, oh. I have very bad posture. Um, my mom so got served an ad on Instagram for a, like a bra that like basically like has an electrical like thing in it that like kind of, <laughs> Like, I need well, that. Like jolt. Oh, I need that. And she literally called me and she was like, I'm ordering, like I saw an ad on Instagram, like I'm gonna buy it for you. Um, I, and she was like, the only thing is that you have to change the batteries every day. And I'm like, no, that's not happening. But thanks. But I no am way. gonna start doing Pilates again because I can't believe you guys thought I was shorter. What? Um, okay, so let's do some of these questions. Ariel and Eva, I know you both interned in fashion what was that experience like for you and what advice and takeaways can you share? I interned at Derek Lamb when I first, actually I was still in college, I think. Where, did you go to college here in the city? Syracuse. Oh. Yeah. Um, and yeah. One Syracuse person. Yeah, come on, where are my college friends? One full friend? single, whereas watch this, friends, Johns Hopkins. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Syracuse. Mom, dad, in-laws. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think interning, I mean, it's definitely important. Mm -hmm. It was a great learning experience for me. I think that um, you just have to accept doing that like annoying work mm -hmm. to really, you know, learn and, and um, grow in the industry. So I think that it was, it was an interesting experience. My sister definitely was not happy that she got me that internship because I was not the best intern. Oh, I her sister got a is an amazing yeah. stylist, by the way. Yeah, my sister is an amazing stylist, and she, um, so she introduced me to Derek Lamb and begged for them to give me an internship when I was like in college and not even thinking of what I wanted to do yet. Um, and I, I left in the middle of the day, I said I didn't feel well, to get a haircut. <laughs> and it, somehow they found out, and it was... Somehow, you, they it wasn't it. good. She came back with like a completely different hair. <laughs> but not, yeah, exactly. I and like a perfect hair blowout. Blonde. And she was like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's so sick. exactly. Yeah. But no, now I now now I, I now what would you great. do if you had an intern like that now? I would be like goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I was like the war. I I feel bad. But Derek Lamb still. I mean, I go to his shows. He invites me. So I guess unless he doesn't remember it was me, which is possible because it, I had a different last name. Ah. Yeah. Okay. So I'm trying to not, you know, I'm not letting them really know that. Yeah, it well, there are uh, 900 people in this room. So I'm pretty Don't sure someone's going to like at mention him <laughs> and be like, she was a terrible intern. 
Um, I interned at Harper's Bazaar when I was a junior, and it, for me it was a very um, formative experience because it really was what kind of like gave me a light bulb moment and kind of transitioned me from being a terrible pre-med student at Hopkins <laughs> to um, the magazine industry. And I like loved all that annoying work. Like I feel like actually for me, I weirdly miss doing, like nowadays like when I talk to someone and they're like, I'm an assistant and I spend most of my day filing. I'm like, like I miss oh my that. God, I miss that. <laughs> because like in a way it's like when at the end of the day, like your most stressful task was to file. Yeah. And then you don't have to worry about these huge decisions or like kind of and you're the also pressure like, of that. And you're also like, you're really young. You have like an amazing life and so much ahead of you. And you still go that's out that's past 10 p.m. Or you go to nightclubs. You're not just, you go to nightclubs. Yeah. I don't even think they call them nightclubs. Right, Discotheques? What do they call them? Discotheques? <laughs> okay, 1972, <laughs> Studio 54. I think they just say like out. Like we're they going go out. out. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Are there pre-games like, anymore? Who's 20 in this audience? Is anyone 20? One lone hand. What do you guys say? Out. 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 Yeah. See, I'm hip to the lingo. Yeah, all right. That um, was easy. But I loved interning, and I think that the key to being an intern is like, have you guys seen the movie, The Intern? The best movie. Okay. So my dad called me after that movie. I wish I could tell this to him in person, like if he came to this speech. <laughs> Um, I, and he called me and he was like, that was a great movie. I'm going to start applying for internships. Aww. I will always organize the table of junk. Let him and, work at Instagram. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. No. Um, but if you need an intern, let me know. <laughs> he will organize your table Wait, for we you. We kind of do need one. He would be great. Uh, reverse mentoring. Um, but So I feel like in that movie, there's that table that's like obviously a very heavy-handed metaphor for like everything where it's like a table of stuff and like Robert De Niro goes and organizes it and it makes um, Anne Hathaway like he super happy. He makes me sad in that movie though. Hmm? He makes me sad in that movie. Why? I feel bad for him. They're like Why? not nice to him and he's like experienced. But he proves himself and then they like love him. I know. All right. That movie made you sad of all the very movies? very sensitive about Robert De Niro for some reason. Oh. I think because he reminds me of my dad. Robert De Niro reminds me. My dad is, is the weird? Asian Robert De Niro. They look yeah, exactly. I think a lot of people they look feel like, that way. Like, I think maybe after a certain age, everyone's dad looks is like Robert, Robert De, Niro, De Niro. Where you're like, oh, they have kind of like a scowling, <laughs> yeah. like, like unruly brows. I don't know. So true. Um, but for the people in the audience, like the three people in the audience who are 20, um, <laughs> what I would say is like when you go into an internship, like, always ask your boss, like, is there anything else I can yeah. do? Um, and then also look for those projects that it seems like they're always like, oh, I wish someone like would do this, or like, oh, we've been hand. meaning to do this, but we haven't had a chance, like volunteer to do that. So when I was at Harper's Bazaar, when like this was before people had like the cloud to store contacts in, like literally everything was done on a Rolodex. <laughs> Um, and so basically I created this like Word document of every single like beauty, beauty industry and I was like, oh my god, it's amazing, you can press control F. I taught my boss how to press control F. And then she could search like, who does the PR for Kerastas? Um, and that was something that I literally did like... You would have been a really good doctor too. I was pre-med. That's so yes. cool. I would not have been a good doctor oh. because um, I would faint at the sight of blood. Really? <laughs> yeah, I probably would like pass out and like slash vomit. Like when Ren has had like, you know, scrapes, I literally am like, hold on, <laughs> hold on a second. And she's like, mommy, I'm like, hold on. <sighs> like literally That's it's amazing. like, but I also get like freakishly calm when right. like knock on wood, like stuff like like when, happens. Yeah. Like anytime There's I get emergency. stressed, like I tend to go to, like spiral downward into That's like. That's a great doctor trait though. Maybe, yeah. like yesterday I was uh, flying from San Francisco on the red eye to get back to New York and um, I left my purse at the wing, which is like where I was speaking, and literally we got to San Francisco airport, and I got a call that was like, oh, your purse is still here, is your ID in it? And I was like, oh God. And like, this is where I entered that eerie calm. I was like, yes, <laughs> I do believe it is. And I had this like, and the guy who was driving me literally was like, are you okay? And I'm like, turn around. I have to turn back. <laughs> And then the whole time I was just sitting there staring out the window like this because I spiraled a into like be, some part like, of myself. What can you do? You I know? literally was like, it's yeah. going to be okay. And then I texted <laughs> the publicist and I was like, this is not an ideal situation. <laughs> I, I, I do believe you need to search for another flight. And then I wrote one more time for emphasis, this is not ideal. <laughs> and it's like of all the things, she was like, it's going to be okay. And I'm like, 
yes, I believe it will be. <laughs> like, it was just like freak, it was like freaky. And when I ever enter that calm, like that's when Tom gets really scared. Um, okay, let's do another question. Um, let's see, da, da, da. Eva, Ariel, just curious, if you love a product, would, do you post about it unsolicited? You guys can be the next Oprah that way. Oh. Um, if you look under your seats, there are cars for everyone! <laughs> you get a car, you get a car. Um, Phil, I mean, we're both in the same position where we are very fortunate to get stuff yeah. like sent to us. Yeah. Um, I would say like 99, maybe not 99, but a good portion of the stuff ends up being shared with my coworkers at same. Instagram. Where, to the point where we're moving desks right now and everyone's like, we want to sit next to the fashion team. And because I'm literally like, does anyone need a chocolate-covered artichoke? Like, <laughs> I just got sent a box of chocolate-covered artichokes, something like super random. Um, but I post, about, like I don't get paid to post. Like the only thing I've ever posted that's been a paid partnership is um, the uh, Janie and Jack line because I was paid to do that collection. Um, like, um, and then um, they required that I post a right. certain number of times, right. which I w have done times like 50 because I think the collection is so cute, if I may say so myself. Um, but everything else I post, I'm like not paid to do it. I yeah. just do it because I like it. And so like I used to, I, I, I need to start doing this again. I have this like newsletter for like, of, like mom tips. Oh, I love that newsletter. Oh, thank you. So good. Um, and then so I have this newsletter and it's like, it's all really You're random stuff. you organized. Kinda. You like do a lot. Kind of. do a lot. Yeah, um, but the That's last like thing I posted about was like, um, like you know those like cotton balls that you used to take makeup off? And literally like one day I was like, why hasn't someone like invented like reusable ones? Oh my God, this is like my billion dollar idea. Like I'm gonna be a billionaire, I'm gonna retire. Okay. And then I like went on Amazon <laughs> and there were like 5,000 companies that do it already. Um, but then I posted about that in my newsletter and I was definitely not paid by that company, <laughs> by this random tiny like, re but by the way, they're really great. Um, Anyway. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Well, that's kind of what, how my career started, um, but I'm at a point now where I, I guess, after, after that became a thing for influencers, mm -hmm. I kind of, I mean, I tell this to all my followers, I did accept pretty much everything that came my way because I didn't know any better. I was excited and. I was so excited to get well, these you jobs also are and get like paid for it. Paid to do it, and it was the very... difference is that I have a full time job right. that like pays me. Yeah. And so for me, I'm kind of like I'm I'm already right. paid. You right. know. I also feel like for me, it would be a conflict of interest to post and get paid by fashion brands to post because I'm supposed to be right. helping them. Of course. So if like, um, well, Gucci it would be so great if Gucci were like, we want to pay you seven million dollars to post this. I'll be like, sure. Let's make it eight. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, but it's like, I feel like for me, it would be kind of weird. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I was doing, I mean, I admit that I did do it um, in the beginning when Instagram first launched and that was how we were, you know, building our careers. But um, after I saw the reaction from a lot of my followers, it became um, something that we were super selective with. Mm -hmm. Now, I mean, I occasionally post uh, products that are paid, but that's not what my focus is anymore. I do a lot of paid sponsorships, but we as a team now, we, if we have never tried the product, we have it sent to us like a couple weeks before, we test it out. If we're not into it, we just say no yeah. to the job. Um, but then aside from that, I get things gifted all the time. So if I'm actually loving the product, I post about it unpaid and they usually come to me after that being like, we wanna pay you now because so many people are buying it and we right. wanna work together. Um, but if I get a gift, you know, that I don't necessarily like or use, I just don't post it. Yeah. And my team, all the girls on my team take things, my sisters. Yeah. So it goes to good places, but yeah, yeah. that makes sense. Okay, very important, serious question. Who makes your boots? Actually, I can answer that because I asked, I asked that exact question as she was walking up the stairs. I was like, who are your boots by? Um, they're John Vito Rossi. Yes who makes super comfortable best shoes. shoes. So comfortable. Uh, fun fact, he's the original Sergio Rossi's, Rossi's son, son. right? And then he, when Sergio Rossi was acquired, he kind of started his own business, and he makes like the most perfect pointy-toed pumps, I think. And the heels are actually very comfortable. Yeah. Like I don't usually say that about a lot of designers. Like they're, the shoes are really comfortable. You could, they're I think all worth day the money heels. too. Wait, where's Michelle? Remember, I like made you buy a pair, and I basically for one year was like, she was like, I don't know. I'm like, you have to buy the shoes. <laughs> like, um, and so 
are they not extremely comfortable? Yeah, there we go. Well, these are Shells, extremely comfortable. Yeah, well, that's a good kind of... And the I'm, heel's not too high. I'm super happy that lower heel heights are I know, a thing now. it's trendy. I love it. I'm into it, too. It makes Especially me so as happy. Especially as a mom. As a mom. Yep. Yes. Ideal. Yes. Ideal situation. Like the Chanel that has the kind of stacked, like, yeah. kind of, like... Love that shoe. I love that shoe. The sling back kind of hurts a little bit sometimes. Really? Yeah. You might be getting the wrong, wrong size. size. Chanel sizing is very inconsistent. Yeah. I think uh, I need to change. This is like turning into a whole Sorry. like okay. separate conversation. Those shoes are on the cover of my book. Oh, and cute. then um, they are like, if you look at the cover of my book, oh, and the should you choose to buy my book, <laughs> which it will be available in the back later, um, you, there's a lot of kind of fashion, what I call Easter eggs. So these are the um, Manolo Blahnik Hungisi, which is the Sex and the City, Carrie Bradshaw, Mr. Big Shoe. What are those, Lady Gaga? These are Vivian Westwood's um, kind of platform heel um, that, remember Naomi Campbell tripped on yep. the Vivian Westwood That's runway? This is the shoe that she was wearing. Um, <laughs> Naomi's gonna get mad at me. I've said that in every interview like that I've done about the book. I'm, and then Naomi Campbell tripped. Uh, she's going to text me about that. Uh, so that is Chanel, um, Ruby Slippers, and then there's like Versace shoes in here. Let's see, what else is there? The YSL cage boot, I put a Glossier bomb for Emily Weiss in there. Virgil Abloh, the 23s oh, for wow. Gigi um, Hadid, who uh, that's her lucky number. Avocado for Ami Song. Stan Smith's uh, the Prada flame shoe. So it's like for fashion nerds in the audience, like you'll when you read this shoes. book, I think you'll like, um, yeah. you'll get all these references, but hopefully it's a book that even if you don't, um, if you're not super into fashion, you'll like it anyway. Um, okay, now that we've exhausted shoe trivia, <laughs> okay, um, let's see. Eva, as a first generation American who didn't have fashion connections growing up, now looking back, what would be the best advice you have in making connections from the industry? From Tanya. Hart. That's a good question. Um, so for me, it's like I think you have to turn over every stone. Um, I'm a first generation American. I grew up here in New York, but I wouldn't say I knew. I wasn't like part of the Gossip Girl New York. Like I grew up downtown before downtown was like cool. And my parents, um, who are immigrants from Taiwan and China, when they moved here, they were working in import export and um, from a really small community, not really like in the fashion world at all. Um, and so for me, I applied to Harper's Bazaar not through like a lot of people in fashion get their internship through a like sister. if they're lucky, a sister, but sometimes it's like an aunt or a friend's cousin Someone. or something. I, I didn't have that. I just applied with my resume and I found the information on the internet like for the corporate program. Um, and so I think you have to turn over every stone. Um, when you go to college, every college and some high schools even have an alumni office. So like ask them, say like, oh, like I'm really interested in, for instance, fashion marketing. Like, are there any alumni who work in fashion? And it might not be at like Chanel. It might be at like um, a store that like is not your personal style. Doesn't matter. Ask them if they can. You can have an informational interview with them. Email them with a big like. The subject line should read like, "Fill in the blank school class of." I don't even want to think about what class they would. You you guys would be, <laughs> like two, three thousand eighteen. I don't I don't know. Um, when I was doing my book, like when I was yesterday or two days ago reading to like a room full of um, first graders, or they weren't even first graders, they were like kindergartners, and like at the end of this kind of Q&A session, you ask the kids like, do you have any questions for me? And they, most of the time when they ask questions, it's not questions. It's literally like. <laughs> Can I have a cookie? It's, it's not even yeah. like that. That's a question. Oh, okay. Like they literally are like, my mom has shoes. And you're like, <laughs> oh, that's so nice. Um, the other question I got was like, do you know Margaret Keegan? And I'm like, and I'm racking my brain because I'm like, is she a famous like poet? Is she like a notable woman? And I was like, Margaret Keegan. And she was like, she's my mom. And I'm like, <laughs> and I was like, and I was like, no. Um, the best question was like, the best two questions. The next best question was like, excuse me, do you like Cheez-Its? And I'm like, yeah. And they were like, okay, I really needed to know. And I'm like, oh, okay. Um, and then the best, best question was someone was like, um, excuse me, like, how old are you and what year were you born? And oh, I was God. like, oh, like, and I always forget if I'm 38 or 30. Am I 30, am I people from Hopkins with me? Like, 39, thank you. I always say I'm like 37 and people are like, that is a lie. And I'm like, I genuinely do not remember. After cow, like, I've lost all track of time. Um, and so I was like, oh, and I, so I said like 38 or 39. And then she was like, what year were you born? And I was like, 
19, oh, first I, I was like, what year were you born? She was like, 2015. <laughs> And I was like, oh my, or 2014, and I was like, oh my God. And then I was like, I was born in 19, and she was like, oh! <laughs> All the kids were literally in unison, like, they, they literally, their jaws dropped, their That's brains so exploded, funny. and they were like, 19? And I was like, 1979. And they were like, oh! <laughs> and they were like, oh my God, you are so old. And I was, and then someone was like, are you a grandma? And I was like, <laughs> I'm a grandma in here because of that question and also because I drink white wine spritzers, but I'm not ashamed of that. Um, but yeah, you have to kind of, I don't remember how we got to that story, but you have to turn over every stone, use all your connections, um, and then you also have to work harder than everyone else. Right. I mean, I did think you just have to, like, blood, sweat, and tears. Like, I feel like there's a lot of um, kind of negativity towards, like, this generation of 20-somethings, like, Millennials, like I am always reading articles that are like, millennials ruined cheese. <laughs> like millennials are killing cheese. Millennials are killing like movies. And I feel like, uh, like I have a, a team of millennials or like some of them are millennials and it's like they're so hardworking and great. You just have to like go in there knowing that you have this like stigma and bias against you and you have to like outperform it, right. I guess. It's tougher on them. Yeah, it's tough. Okay, wah, wah. Like throwing these cards. Next question. Oh, someone, wow, this is like initiative. Because someone put their email, like their Instagram handle for a shout out. Um, shout them out. I, oh, I will. Uh, <laughs> my mom was at your book signing on Thursday in Danville. What's um, both of your favorite things about your mom and being a mom? Well, my mom's not here right now. <laughs> so I think you should start. My, my favorite thing about my mom is how she's just everyone's number one supporter. I mean, she's like the biggest cheerleader, always has your back. She does not miss one phone call. Um, and she just lives and breathes for her daughters. So it's just, it's the best, best role model to look up to as a mother myself, so. Okay, I'm gonna try not to start crying. And then what about being a mom? The best thing about being a mom is just watching my kids learn everything. I mean, just watching you know, them experience the world through their eyes. It's, so entertaining just hearing them speak and do things um, that I share it with the world because it's so funny. And um, I think just, I love the kind of person that they've made me. I think they've made me, you know, I, I used to, before kids, I feel like I was just so all about me and it was, everything was about me and I, I feel like now it's the love that you have for someone else just, it just makes you, I think, a better person. I just feel like a fuller person. Mm. Um, but yeah, I mean, like my kids are just so fun. It's just so fun to be with them. So, is there anything the you miss part. about pre-mom life? Sleeping in and like watching movies. You get on eight a hours of sleep. <laughs> like stop. Yeah, but I, but that's because I go to sleep early. What time do you? What's early? I'm in bed by like nine. Okay, yeah, that's that's my. But, like I'm asleep, right there. but I, I go to sleep at like ten thirty. Right. To make sure that I get those eight hours. Are they but like I want to sleep in on a Sunday and watch movies or like a show all day. But then when you travel, like when I travel, even if I can sleep in, I can't. Oh no, yeah, there's I no literally way. like wake up like you it's know, an alarm clock. It's I've like been an in, in your body. California for the last like yeah seventy two hours, and literally I'm like yes, I can sleep in, and then I wake. I've been yeah, same. Up I have like not slept in four thirty and no. five a.m. and I'm like it's Damn over. It. It's over. And then by the time I like see people, I'm like, I've been up for six hours. <laughs> like, I've had a full day. I'm done. Um, but then, of course, like the time difference is so yeah. hard. Um, so Brittany, where's Brittany? Wait, but you, you didn't answer. The, you didn't I'm answer. going to. Oh, okay. I'm like shouting her out. Where is Brittany? There is no Brittany. She's fake. Up here. Up here. I can't see you because like literally, I'm like. Oh, I see you. Bright light. We cannot see you. Oh my God, you're so excited. <laughs> I love it. Um, okay. So what I would say is my favorite thing about my mom. Okay, so my mom is a tough cookie. Um, she is like, I don't know what is one step past tiger mom. <laughs> is it like uh, lioness? Is it like snow leopard? <laughs> like, I'm trying to think of all the different felines that exist. She is like the consummate tiger mom. Um, I remember growing up, I, I was very underweight as a kid. Me and too. When, and, but it's like sometimes people say that and they're like, I was underweight as a kid and then they show a picture of themselves and they're like a model. Um, oh no, I was no. Like severely underweight. Yeah, I had to drink those in things. Insure. Insure, yes. Me too. Oh my God. Yes, same. Okay. So insure. Yeah. <laughs> and I would say mom, but again, my mom's not here. Um, <laughs> 
So uh, I'm trolling her savagely, by the way, because she's never going to know. Uh, so Ensure's this disgusting drink that they. It was actually good. I had chocolate milk flavored. It's disgusting. Okay. Um, I liked it. So it's like what they give senior citizens when they need senior citizens to like gain weight or like maintain a weight. Um, and oftentimes it's served in like hospitals yeah. and other um, hospital-esque facilities. And so it's each can, I think, is 1,600 calories. Yeah. And so, Yeah. <laughs> I love it's that crazy. like the shocked murmurs tonight have been about yours? my height and about Ensure. Did you drink yours before Ben? I drank, I had to drink three a day. Oh, wow. It's just, it's like thick and pasty. It's good. And so I... <laughs> Tastes just, like chocolate milk. She just like said like it's good. Okay, I know what I'm gonna send her after this like panel oh, don't send those as like now. a thank no. you gift to be like thanks for moderating <laughs> my panel and she's gonna get a big case of Ensure. Um, um, and so I remember it took me a long time to learn how to swim because I was like basically a stick figure. And I remember like I remember this like vividly. I think I was like 10 or 11 or 12 and I was in a swim lesson and my mom was there and she was like. Everyone else is swimming. You're the only one not swimming. And literally just fueled by like sheer anger and kind of like, Grr! I literally like propelled my stick figure body across the pool, like somehow. Um, and so she's always pushed me very hard. Um, when I switched from pre-med to pre-Harper's Bazaar, I guess like pre-fashion, like fashion, um, it's not a real major. Uh, <laughs> But I, um, she like did not, like she was so angry. She didn't speak to me for a while. But I think that like now that I'm a mom, I kind of see that it's because she like loves cared so, so deeply and yeah. loves me so much and really wants me to have like safety and security. And I think that was the motivation be behind her wanting me so badly to be pre-med. Because when I think about it, she, she and my dad moved here from um, Asia with like nothing, like literally classic like immigrant story, moved here with like, I don't remember the number, but like $80 in their pocket. Um, and so it was really a desire for me to have stability. Um, and so now I super appreciate her because she's my Chinese nanny. Um, no, I'm kidding. I super appreciate her because I see like how extra she is. Like if I literally post on Instagram that I'm like <coughs> sick, she literally is like, here is bone broth with like artisanal seaweed and blah, blah, blah. And then if I'm like, oh, I'm hungry, like she'll not just make oatmeal, but she'll make like oatmeal with reduced goji berries and like <laughs> like dates. Like I don't know. It's like so I appreciate her extraness and I see like how I maybe got like a hair of that. Um, but um, yeah, I appreciate her a lot more now. And then also like once you become a mom, it's like especially right after you have a baby, like the hormones that are like coursing yeah. through your body, like. My first, I would say, while well, the entire time I was breastfeeding, I was like, everything made me cry. Like literally the seamless guy would show up and I would be like, <laughs> I'm so grateful for you. I thank you for everything you do. I'm not exaggerating. And no, the guy would true. literally be like, oh my God. And it got to a point where this one Thai restaurant near me, I always wanted Tom Yum soup, you know, that Thai spicy soup. And literally, like, the guy, the delivery guy was literally like, oh, the other delivery guy did not feel comfortable. <laughs> and I was like, and he was like, it's okay, it's okay, I have babies too. And I was like, oh. <laughs> um, but um, I don't remember how I started talking about that either. But um, the rest of the question was like, what's my favorite part about being the, a mom? It's like everything you said. I think, I think it's an incredibly humbling experience. I think, especially the experience of giving birth yeah. itself is, um, like it's something that is just, it's insane. It's insane. It's the connection is like, yeah, it's like the, you, you look at your kids now and you're like, I made you. I literally, yeah. Yeah. I say that to them all the time. I'm like, I made you. Yeah. You're welcome. Uh, Ren, stop talking about Hatchimals. Uh, <laughs> so um, it's an incredibly humbling experience. I feel like for me, it's like the greatest honor of my life is going to be like being their mom yeah um and hopefully like i can just do them justice i'm going to try not to cry <laughs> i'm not pregnant <laughs> so okay let's keep going i think we have time for like two more questions here's a little bit more lighthearted question how do you decide on which designer pieces to invest in from oh my goodness we got to do something about this username <laughs> s at s dot a m m m m m m m Dot Wait, y. she wrote it, that whole thing out? Yeah. Where are you, S dot A M M? Okay, yeah, we got to fix your username. So that's hard to type out. Um, so how do you decide which designer pieces to invest in from Sam? Um, 
I think for me, I like to just invest in the pieces that I know work work for me. Like I, for example, like Gian Vito, I think that his shoes are so comfortable. So that's usually what I'll splurge on when I'm looking for a new boot or a new flat. Um, and then I also like to look at what my sister buys. She has impeccable taste. She just like is, her style is so, like you know. Can you give her a shout out please? Her Instagram. Yeah, her Instagram's Danielle Nachmani. Um, she's, she's so, she's yeah. just cool. She's just like cool. That's like really the, the best word to, to use for her. Um, so you just know that whatever she posts, like it's good and it's yes. good quality and it's, yeah. she really thought about it for a long time before buying it. So that's when I'm like, oh, maybe I should start like, you know, investing in that designer. Yeah. That's, that's usually how it's I. very helpful to have a stylist sister. Just I'm, like copy my sister. So she um, styles uh, this actress who I literally believe is the most beautiful human She's being stunning. alive. Her Instagram is, uh, her name is Laura Harrier, H-A-R-R-I-E-R. -R -R -E and literally, She's she like is, a Marvel actress. She's really cool. She too. is ridiculously beautiful. Everything looks good on her. She hurts your eyeballs. Yeah. That's how and I, I'm, say, I'm not saying that lightly because I've met like a lot of people, but she is literally one of the most beautiful Agreed. people I've ever met. And I, she's like so smart and great. Yeah, um, she's stunning. And she has amazing style. Yeah. But, um, so she styles her. And every time I see her, I'm like, I stop talking. That's for pretty a much what it is, though. Whenever Danielle styles her, I just. That's when I'm like, oh, that's a good designer to invest yeah. in. When I see it on Laura, she she wears a lot of Vuitton now. Though, yeah, Laura. well, she's the face. That's why. Oh, is she? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Okay. That's so, like um, how to decide? How do I decide what pieces to invest in? When I was younger, I was not as good about same moderating so purchases. So I would be like, oh, like. Neon green, blah, 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 from Louis Vuitton that costs way more than I should be spending. I'd be like, I'm gonna save up for that because I'm gonna wear that for the rest of my life, the neon green, like frayed acrylic tutu. Um, and now I feel like in my 30s, it's just like, I think when I, honestly, a lot of it started happening when I like, when we bought our apartment and when we like, like had kids and started thinking about the financial future. Right and everything going on, but I used to just like kind of like live like kind of not even paycheck to paycheck, but paycheck to like Net-a-Porter or paycheck yeah, same. to like exact same. Um, Barney's, like literally it would just like in one bank account, like it would go straight there. Um, and I think now when I think about things, it's like I, I would, I invest the most in shoes and bags because I think um, they are things that your kids will continue to wear yeah. that you can keep going back to, Same. especially like a classic bag, um, any kind of classic bag. Um, and then in terms of, it's very fortunate now that a lot of trend right now is based around like kind of like jeans and a white t-shirt. Yeah. I feel like Simplicity. that's always been really chic. Yeah. Like, you know, look at like Diane Keaton, for instance. Have you guys seen the recent Diane Keaton movie? What's it called? Book Club? Oh, it's, it, it's a fun plain movie. She is like so chic in that movie. She's I always chic. She's extra chic she's though. So I chic. literally took pictures of my tiny airplane screen and then I like put it in a folder on my phone for like style inspiration. And then one day Tom was like, why do you have a folder of Diane Keaton? Because <laughs> I was like, oh, can you like um, find this photo and like text it to like whatever? And, and he was like, this is so weird that you have a folder of Diane Keaton, but it's worth it. She, she looks so good in that But it's movie. so true because I feel like now also for me, I mean, I used to buy whatever trendy bag was out there when I was splurging on, you know, an accessory. But now it's like I sold all of them through mm. the Real Real, And now the only bags I invest in are like classic Chanel bags that I know I can, I can hand down to my kids. You have a very good classic Chanel bag in there. It's my favorite. It's really, really good. But like I think about my kids at, like when I'm doing because now I'm like, I don't want to I don't want to spend money on something that's going to be over. Well, what's you know? great is that there are all these Instagram followers of both of ours who are scheming to have Tao and Esme date. <laughs> and so, like, one day, if they date and get married, I will have access she'll have to the Ariel's closet. <laughs> right? Because, like, she'll, like, I'll have keys to her apartment. Did I'll you go see in. what I sent you for your birthday? Did you get it? Yes, I did. Oh, okay. you. The, she I sent, sent her a Chanel a, bag and a Mr. She sent Chris. me a Chanel bag, but it was a giant Rice Krispie treat Chanel bag. <laughs> And she literally, because she had posted in Instagram stories, and you had gifted, well, I think, one of your assistants, like, a Chanel something. And I was like, I want to work for you because I want a Chanel bag. And then she sent me a Chanel bag, um, albeit in Rice Krispie Treat form. Um, okay, so the last question is, um, when your kids grow up, what message do you hope that your children take away from success? Like, what does success mean? How should we define success for our children? To me, it's... Family is number one. Um, and number two is just 
waking up every day and, and feeling happy and excited about what you do. Um, I think it's not obviously as easy, you know, for everyone to start out in a job that you love, but I think the ultimate goal is to feel happy every single morning about what you're going to do that day. So, you know, for example, like my husband, he used to be a lawyer and every single morning, every single night he would come home at like 12 o'clock at night and it would be like three in the morning. And I'm like, why are you still awake? And he was always just like, because I don't want to wake up tomorrow and do that all over again. Like he was just miserable. Mm -hmm. He was so unhappy and it was just such a horrible, I mean, it just, it was a horrible feeling to, to see someone that I love feel that way. And I think for me, it's just being able to let my kids know that, you know, how important it is to remain close with your family, mm -hmm. find a tradition that you guys can carry on. And like for me, it's Friday night dinner with my family. I'll never, I mean, I hated it growing up, but now it's like the, I mean, I'll never not do that. Like that's definitely happening with my kids. But um, just having those traditions and, and just finding something that you love and, and fuels you. Yeah, I would say family, of course, is I, I see my parents like multiple times a week. Um, and I really want my kids to have a close relationship to them because I was very close to my grandmother growing up. Uh, my grandmother, who now has Alzheimer's, um, you know, she's not really with us in this world anymore. And actually, June is her name. And so I always told Tom that third reaction, <laughs> my height. What was the second thing? Oh, your inshore weight. Your weight. Well, oh, inshore. Yeah. <laughs> and the, the yeah, the caloric intake, the caloric count of inshore, and then the name June. So my grandmother's name was June, and I always said that um, to Tom, I was like, I want I want to name one of our kids Juno. And so when I was writing this book and we were talking about kids, I was like, so when we have our third kid, we're going to name her Juno. And like, da da da. And then basically, he, he, I think his reaction was literally just this like, extra kind of like blank look at me. <laughs> and then he was just like, he just shook his head very like, like kind of silently. Um, and so Juno, in many ways, is my third child. Um, she's my third daughter. Um, and so for me, I think that a lot of it is going to be family, but it's also um, as well going to be like, I want to, I feel like it's my job and I, I will be successful in life if I like raise these two, two kids, maybe third, who knows, not pregnant. Um, <laughs> and like, I, and I always say this about Ren, like Ren has, and both my kids have such a spark in them. Ren is like bonkers. She's completely crazy in a good way. But my job as a parent is to kind of like, protect that flame, protect that spark, and kind of like walk through life kind of trying to shield her, but at the same time having her be able to experience life. Um, and you can't shield her too much either. So for me, when I don't, I'm, I don't measure success in terms of income, I don't measure in terms of like material goods, like I'm kind of past that phase in my life where I'm like, I need like the $196,000 watch. I actually never had that phase, but like really like it's so much more about like things that you can't measure in yeah. terms of like, like material things right. and that sense of connection with family. I think if we are able to maintain that, that is success okay. to me. So yeah. agreed. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Uh, so I think um, for those of you guys who uh, picked up the book, I'm going to be um, signing them after this. Um, they make a great Christmas present. <laughs> and then before you guys go, before you guys go, sorry, can I ask the people in the room uh, up there, that tiny room up there, to turn up the lights? Because I'm going to do a picture yeah. of the audience. We want to do a selfie. Another excited reaction. Yes. OK, stand up, everyone. All right, hold on. Let's get together. Put my, my thing in my oh, underwear. Okay. All right, it's fine. Oh, they're not going to say it. Woo! Uh, hold on. You do a video, and I'll do a. <laughs> Smile. All right, thanks guys. Thank you. Bye guys. Bye.